function of our cells that under most conditions, calcium levels in the cell be very low. So I they, gave a talk in Eastern Canada at uh, Queen's University before I came to Europe. And I gave two talks in London, and then I went to the European Parliament in Brussels and, and gave a couple of short talks there. And then I went to this big, important meeting in Mainz, Germany. And uh, it's been busy uh, since I've been here in Finland giving a lot of talks. And of course, the, the issue here is that we have a 4G antenna that's going to be converted into a 5G antenna shortly and then we'll have of course major impacts on the town if that in fact goes ahead. So that's part of the reason why we're here. I think the most important single piece of information is that the safety guidelines do not work. They do not predict biological effects and therefore they are not safety guidelines at all. The industry has been claiming for many years that these, uh, these EMFs we're talking about are too weak to do anything. They simply cannot do anything except heat things and and therefore you need a lot of them in order to heat things. There are eight different types of highly repeated studies where each of these repeated studies show that the safety guidelines do not predict biological effects and therefore do not predict safety. And so I've reviewed each of those eight. And let me just say, I mean, basically what I'm going to tell you is we know a lot about this. You get um, many different reproductive effects that an impact male reproduction, female reproduction, causes spontaneous abortion, lowered levels of the sex hormones, lowered libido, almost everything that has to do with reproduction is impacted negatively. Uh, and male reproduction is especially heavily impacted. Uh, we get many effects on the nervous system, including the brain, and those in turn lead to the things that many people are complaining about all the time. I can't sleep, I'm tired all the time, I'm depressed, my memory doesn't work, I'm anxious. We have attacks on the DNA of our cells. We have hormonal effects on every single hormone system as far as I can tell. We have uh, what's called uh, increased apoptosis. This is uh, programmed cell death. That's something that's involved in causing the reproductive effects and the neurodegenerative effects. We have oxidative stress and free radical damage and inflammation and those have roles in essentially all chronic diseases in humans. Then there's uh, cardiac effects which are life-threatening on the electrical control of the heart and then of course we have cancer. And so all of these are extensively documented in the literature and uh, many many review articles have been published on each of them such that we have a very extensive evidence in humans and in animals and uh, these are all of high level concern. I haven't talked about this in an interview before. <laughs> in 2016, 
I spent many long hours sitting in front of my computer not getting anything done. And I, I, and I came to the realization I was just too afraid to do anything. I was just too fearful. And so I decided, well, okay, I'll do what I can do and not worry about what I cannot do. Uh, and as I started doing that, I became absolutely convinced that we are facing multiple imminent existential threats to our survival. That is, short-term things that will destroy us if we don't respond uh, appropriately. All of the EMFs that we expose to tend to pulse up and down. They change intensity very rapidly. And the fact is that when we go from 2G to 3G, we have much more pulsation. 3G to 4G, we have much more pulsation. 4G to 5G, we have much more pulsation. So each step makes things much more active and therefore much more dangerous. And this is completely ignored by the safety guidelines completely ignored by the industry and the regulatory agencies that are supposed to be protecting our health. There was a, some beautiful studies that were published over 20 years ago now by uh, Magras and Zenos, a couple of Greek researchers in which they took young pairs of mice and they put them in little cages on the ground in an antenna park. So there were a whole series of broadcasting antennas there. The levels at ground level were well below our safety guidelines, so nothing should happen. In mice, the gestation period is about 30 days. So mice can produce one litter in 30 days, and then a little longer than 30 days later, they can produce a second litter and so forth. So what was found was that the first litter was produced, but the numbers were down. The second litter was produced, but the numbers were down. No third litter. The reproduction crashed to zero. And that was apparently irreversible because if you take the mice out of the field, you get very little recovery of the reproduction. So I've been very concerned about the possibility that human populations will be and perhaps even are being affected by the same sort of changes from EMFs that we're already exposed to. There was a, uh, a meta-analysis uh, published in 2017 by Levine et al. And what that means is they looked at many, many, many papers on male reproduction and specifically on sperm counts. And what they found was that sperm counts had dropped to below 50% of normal in every single technologically advanced country on Earth. We are in a crisis situation Male fertility is dropping like a stone. So what's happened since then is that we have now further studies that show that things are getting much worse. And two of those studies were published in 2018, one here in Finland and one in Denmark. And both of those showed that either 78 or 79 percent of males were in either the low fertility range or in the no fertility range. Now I can't tell you that all of this is caused by EMFs, but what I can tell you is we simply don't have any other hypothesis that explains the extraordinary impacts that we're seeing here on male fertility. I think we are seeing right now this reproductive crash that occurred in animals, this reproductive crash to zero, and it is going very rapidly. You get large changes in the 
brain structure of animals when they're exposed. There's also damage to the DNA of our cells, so our very genetic material is being damaged. When you look at animals, you find that their brains are heavily impacted. In fact, the brains of animals exposed to EMFs well within our safety guidelines were shown decades ago to look very similar to what you see in advanced Alzheimer's patients in humans. I mean, you see a real disintegration of the structure of the brain from exposures well within our safety guidelines. I mean, this, this is almost impossible to believe, but that's the, these were known many years ago. The neurological and neuropsychiatric effects, the changes in the brain structure, they all appear to be cumulative. That is, they, they get worse and worse with time of exposure to a particular type and intensity of EMF. And as they become more severe, they become apparently irreversible. And that's something, again, that's far along already in our societies based on the exposures we already have. We are seeing decreases in the age of onset of Alzheimer's disease. And so we may be in very, very deep trouble, and it's quite possible that 5G and perhaps even other things that preceded it may be producing early onset Alzheimer's disease in humans. Um, I don't know that for a fact, but the point is you don't put these things out without doing the kinds of studies you need to find out whether that's going to happen. And that's exactly what the industry is pushing for. That's exactly what the regulatory agencies is pushing for. Just put these things out without studying them. We need to reclaim our rights under the Nuremberg Code, which is supposed to protect us from these kinds of things. Uh, and I think we need to demand that the regulatory agencies stop calling these things safety guidelines when they are not safety guidelines. <laughs>